Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Excited to be here today. I'm uh, going to talk to you a little bit about Celo, which is a global mobile blockchain. Um, I'm Connor McEwen. Uh, so I work for C-Labs, which is a company that works on Celo. Uh, and kind of my focus is really around mobile and financial experiences. Um, I lead our applications engineering team. And I joined C-Labs uh, a little over two years ago just to really focus on building out the, the wallet and the applications engineering team. Uh, I'm joined here by my wonderful colleague, Josh. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. Um, I'm doing developer relations with C-Labs, so I'm really focused on helping developers build on the Celo protocol. Awesome, and uh, both Josh and I will be around to answer questions, so if at any point during the presentation you wanna um, pop some questions up, uh, we'll, we'll try and stick around to answer them. Uh, so first, we're gonna tell you a little bit more about Celo. We're gonna tell you about how we designed the Celo protocol specifically for mobile. We're gonna introduce Valora, which is our new mobile wallet launching very soon. Uh, and then for the developers, we're going to talk about how you can build on both Celo and Valora. So first, what is Celo? I think first we want to start with Celo's mission. Uh, so our goal is to build a financial system that creates the conditions for prosperity for everyone. Uh, that's a very ambitious goal. Um, and so we took a pretty ambitious approach towards reaching that. Uh, we've taken a very full stack approach um, towards building this project. Um, as you can see at the very bottom, uh, we have our own layer one blockchain. This is a fork of Ethereum uh, using the Go Ethereum client, uh, but it is our uh, own blockchain completely separate um, with its own history and uh, network. On top of that blockchain, uh, we have a bunch of core contracts which govern the Celo protocol, uh, and that's kind of the protocol layer. Um, our smart contracts are written in Solidity, um, and you can see how there's a tight interface between both the contracts and the blockchain. On top of that, we also focus on the application layer, uh, which I mentioned, our mobile wallet. And the reason that we took such a full stack approach is because we wanted to build a really compelling end user experience. We felt that only by designing from top to bottom with a product experience in mind, could we deliver uh, an easy to use uh, financially inclusive system. So what is the Celo platform? Uh, I'll dig in deeper here later, but I think there's a couple things to highlight. Um, first, we're a proof of stake. Uh, we use a validator set. Uh, right now there's 100 validators live in the network. Uh, it's programmable uh, and EVM compatible. As I mentioned, we're a fork of Ethereum, and so any contract that you can deploy to Ethereum, you can also deploy to Celo. Another interesting bit about the protocol is that we have full on-chain governance. So that means that you can change things like the number of validators uh, and a bunch of other interesting uh, pieces of the network just through voting on-chain. Uh, just to look back a little bit at 2020, which has been a year that I think no one has expected, um, we started with our great Celo stake-off that was our incentivized testnet. Uh, and so that was to kind of recruit and help our initial set of validators uh, get started. With those initial set of validators, we launched the Celo network in April, um, which included our native Celo asset. And then just last week, we launched our stable value currency, the Celo dollar, uh, and the stability bro protocol on top of that, uh, which keeps the Celo dollar pegged to the US dollar. As you can see, we're almost to the Valora mobile wallet launch. Uh, so it's been an exciting year, and I can't wait to uh, show you the mobile wallet when it's live. One of the things that uh, we believe is really important as we've built Celo is user research. Um, as I mentioned, we want to build something that's accessible to everyone. Uh, and how can we build that thing if we don't have everyone's opinion? So we spent time as a team going around understanding those the needs of people who are financially excluded uh, and how what we're building can help them. That research uh, has really informed how we design the Celo protocol. 
And I'll talk about a couple of ways that what we've done is really unique for mobile. As I mentioned with the launch of the Celo dollar, uh, the Celo protocol allows for multiple stable value currencies. Uh, we think this is really important for usability so that users don't have to worry about the price volatility of whatever asset they're holding. We also allow users to pay for gas in multiple currencies. Um, it can be confusing to understand the difference between two different assets that you might hold and why you have to pay with one to transfer another. Uh, and so we've kind of simplified that experience for our users just by enabling uh, payment with multiple currencies. We have a lightweight mobile identity protocol that makes it easy to find other people on the network so that you can send and receive money from them. And then the last piece is the ability to sync quickly to the network in a trustless way using our ultralight client so that mobile devices can participate in the network without relying on a centralized hosted service. So the first bit, as I talked about, is the Celo dollar, or CUSD. It's a stable value currency pegged to the US dollar. So we want anyone who wants to exchange one Celo dollar should always be able to get one fiat US dollar. There's a couple types of stable coins uh, that you might be familiar with. Uh, and I think the important thing to think about here is how they're collateralized. So first I'll start with Tether. Um, that's collateralized with fiat currency off-chain. There's a bank somewhere that's holding US dollars, uh, and then there's a corresponding blockchain, the Tether blockchain, um, which has a, an amount of Tether USDT that's equivalent to uh, the amount of fiat currency held in the bank. Uh, unfortunately, that's a pretty centralized system, um, and it requires trust of whatever entity is holding that fiat currency in the bank. The second is collateralized by crypto assets. Uh, so many folks here might be familiar with Maker and their stable currency, DAI. Um, that stable value currency is backed by crypto assets on chain, um, Ethereum, and that enables uh, DAI to hold a peg to the US dollar. Uh, we believe this is a pretty complex system and requires a deep understanding of CDPs and uh, the Maker system in order to understand how it works. There's also algorithmic stable coins. Um, uh, some of you might've heard of Basis, um, which uses seniorage shares, uh, and that has no uh, other asset backing, but just uses a algorithmic uh, supply and demand of a currency in order to keep the price stable. Celo uses a hybrid of both the crypto backed and the seniorage share uh, style protocol. Um, which we believe is a really nice compromise that allows us to um, both scale the supply of Celo dollars well, but also keep a strong peg. Uh, if you're curious about learning more, um, I'll talk a little bit more, but there's also a stability white paper on the website that you might want to check out. The stability mechanism has a couple pieces. Uh, first is the Celo reserve. That holds the reserve of Celo, as well as other crypto assets um, that backs the Celo dollar and other stable currencies. Next, there's oracles, uh, and that's required to report the price of Celo to US dollars. Uh, and that is sourced from exchanges. By adding that price on chain, the reserve can work to keep the supply and demand of Celo dollars constant. And the last piece is uh, what we call CP Dodo, or our exchange. Uh, it's a type of automated market maker exchange that allows anyone in the network to, to trade between CUSD and Celo uh, and eventually other stable currencies. Um, you can learn a little bit more about the reserve. Uh, we have a reserve website uh, and that tells you exactly how much Celo is in the reserve as well as other crypto assets right now containing Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can also take a look on GitHub and find, uh, see all of our uh, contracts, which I mentioned are open source, um, so you can see exactly how the reserve works if you want to dive a little deeper. The next feature of the protocol that enables uh, mobile users, we think really well, is allowing, to, allowing users to pay for gas in a stable currency. As we went into the field and started doing some research, um, we had a lot of questions about how do I pay for transactions? We experimented with using words like security fee or um, different kinds of fees. Uh, and then also folks were confused about 
the difference between cello dollars and cello, um, formerly known as cello gold. Uh, and that kind of uh, led us to think a little bit about how we could simplify the experience for our users. And that led to a change in the protocol, adding a fee currency. Um, as I mentioned, we're a fork of Ethereum, and this is one of the fields that's been added to our transactions. Uh, this fee currency can specify which other uh, asset on the chain that someone would like to pay for gas in, um, or if it's unspecified, then the transaction fee will just be paid in the sell a native asset. We think this really simplifies the mental model for users so that they don't have to worry about holding multiple different currencies. If you want to transact in cello dollars, you can just pay for your transaction in cello dollars. The next piece, as I mentioned, is the lightweight identity protocol. That enables users to map their phone number to an address to make it easy to discover other users they might want to transact with. So a little bit about how this identity protocol works. This is the attestation flow. So a uh, wallet user who wants to verify their phone number will first request an attestation in a smart contract. That smart contract will use a pseudo random function to randomly select a validator. That validator uh, is revealed to the wallet user and then the wallet user can reveal the phone number at which they, receive, they wish to receive the text message using our attestation service. So validators are running the cell blockchain, but then they also run this attestation service, uh, which enables them to verify user phone numbers. As I mentioned, the, uh, the validator to send the text message is randomly selected from the current set uh, to prevent any collusion between validators trying to map a specific phone number. As the wallet reveals that phone number to the attestation service of the corresponding validator, the attestation service will send a signed text message to the wallet user. And then the wallet user takes that signed text message and sends another transaction, uh, completing the loop and proving that they are the owner of this uh, phone number. So any of anyone who might have that user in their address book will be able to find them and send money. Now you might be wondering, uh, how can we ensure that phone numbers remain private? Uh, it's important concern that if someone were to try and say scrape all of the existing uh, verified phone numbers um, that could potentially lead to phishing or SIM swaps or um, other dangerous behavior. So what we've built to counteract that problem is a phone number privacy service. This service uses a verifiable oblivious pseudo random function to generate a unique salt per phone number and rate limit queries. It's a little bit of a mouthful, um, so I'll explain a little bit uh, in a simpler way. So as a wallet user um, who wants to wishes to verify their phone number, um, what you want to do is to obfuscate your phone number with a salt. Uh, and so obviously, if you add a salt to your phone number, the hash of those two things as the identifier, it's much harder to guess and scrape um, the phone number. So in order to get that salt for both your phone number and other users' phone numbers, um, we use this phone number privacy service. So first, the wallet user blinds their phone number, um, which is a cryptographic function which just uh, ensures that none of the operators of this service are able to uh, discover the phone number of the requesting wallet user. Then using a combination of uh, multiple different service uh, providers, uh, none of whom have enough power to uh, discover the salt for any individual phone number, the wallet user is able to request the salt for their corresponding phone number, use the signature aggregation of multiple different phone number privacy service uh, providers, and then uh, get back a salt from which they can use to, uh, to uh, in their mapping. Likewise, if a user wishes to look up the phone number of another user to see if they're on the network, they can query this phone number privacy service. Um, the important piece here is that those queries are rate limited so that no one can scrape uh, the database of all phone numbers. Um, and uh, then uh, we ensure that there's both a uh, a, the ability, there's the usability of being able to discover people, uh, but also the, uh, the privacy is, uh, you know, we respect the user's privacy. Um, the last piece here is the ultralight client, and that enables fast syncing to mobile devices. 
as I mentioned, when we're thinking about building a global blockchain, um, we want this to be accessible to everyone. And so this might lead to uh, some concerns that people in Silicon Valley aren't familiar with or don't usually think about. Things like intermittent data access, difficulty charging, um, older devices, or lesser technical fluency. And so when thinking about designing our protocol, we wanted to ensure that there was a path for everyone to use it. That's why our uh, ultralight syncing protocol doesn't require syncing the full blockchain or even the full chain of headers. As I mentioned, since Cell is a proof of stake network, um, there's a set of validators who are responsible for producing blocks. The validators set can only change on an epoch, um, and an epoch is just a set number of blocks, of consecutive blocks. Uh, right now, there's an epoch about every day on the Cell network. So instead of having to sync the entire blockchain or the entire header chain, a light client only needs to sync the header for each epoch block, which contains the validator set. Then they're able to trustlessly verify that they have the true um, blockchain from the beginning uh, without requiring every single block or every single header. This enables a light client to quickly sync up, even if they haven't been participating in the network before, um, and still not rely on a centralized hosted service in order to uh, participate. We're also working on an improvement to this uh, protocol that will allow users to sync without even the entire epoch header chain. Um, and if you're interested, I recommend you take a look at uh, Michael's talk on Plumo. Um, this uses zero knowledge proofs in order to uh, allow light clients to sync to the latest chain state without even requiring every epoch header. So that brings me to what we've built using this protocol. And I'd like to introduce Valora, which is our mobile wallet launching very soon. Valora has been in progress the entire time we've been working on the Cell protocol, working hand in hand to make sure that as we work to ship this network and build this protocol, we understand the restraints and the concerns of wallet users, and we'll be able to uh, build a network that's accessible. So talk a little bit about Valora architecture. Uh, so on the UI level, we use React Native. Um, that enables us to ship the same code to both iOS and Android. Um, all of our UI code is written in TypeScript, um, which we think provides for more security and, uh, and an easier developer experience. Uh, the middle layer is uh, our SDK that we call Contract Kit. Josh will talk a little bit about this later, but um, the SDK makes it easy to interact with any of the contracts running on the Scylla network. And then the last piece is the Cell blockchain actually running on the mobile device. So as I mentioned, the Cell blockchain is written in Go, um, and it's compiled with a tool called Go Mobile, and that allows us to actually run the same blockchain code on both iOS and Android phones. Um, and that ensures that the phone can communicate with the network um, using that same code. So as we're building this, um, we thought a lot about how we can simplify this application as much as possible. How can we give people access to the financial services they need uh, without, having, ne without needing to understand a ton of complex information? So I'll start with uh, kind of our onboarding flow. Um, now, I'm not sure if anyone else remembers this, but uh, I remember when I first started using Venmo, uh, and got invited to it, I was actively recruiting my friends uh, to start using it. I would send them some money and say, hey, when we're at dinner and you know, I'm not gonna put my credit card down, I'm gonna send you $20 on this app and you gotta install it because it'll make your life way better. Um, unfortunately, with existing cryptocurrencies, there's no real way to do that, right? Because you can't send someone money without knowing their address. What's great about our lightweight identity protocol is that it solves that problem and I'll tell you how right here. So if you're inviting someone to the Cell network, what you'll first do is create, generate a new private key and uh, transfer a little bit of money on it. Uh, this money is enough to verify. And so then you'll text that private key to whichever person you're trying to invite to the network. So that person will take uh, the small amount of money on the invitation private key. They'll generate a new private key in their app uh, transfer that money, and then 
use that small amount of money to pay for verification. So then uh, they have a new verified account. And the last piece is that uh, when you initially wanted to uh, send someone money, you can actually escrow a larger sum of money uh, with their phone number and that private key that you sent. So only after verifying their phone number are they able to withdraw money. So if I wanted to pay you back $20 for dinner, I'd transfer a little bit to that private key, I would escrow the rest of the $20, um, and then only after verifying would you have access to that uh, $20. We think this is a much more secure experience than um, sending private keys around, but also provides really great usability and the ability to invite new users to the network. As I mentioned before, if you're curious, uh, we'd love for you to take a look at our escrow contracts um, so you can understand a little bit more about how it works. There are a few other features that I love to talk about too uh, in Valora. One of them is key storage. So, uh, we believe that uh, while it should be non-custodial, there should be no central entity that uh, holds a user's funds unless they want to. Uh, and so we designed Valora such that users are the only people who have access to their private key and funds. This is an important, uh, important thing to worry about though, right? Because uh, obviously we want people to keep their key safe and we don't want um, anyone to be able to take a user's money. And so, what we've done is uh, encrypt the private key um, using both a uh, client-side generated pepper that's random as well as a pin um, so that even if someone is able to get a file system access to the mobile wallet, uh, they will not be able to unlock the phone to send funds anywhere. We also have spent a while trying to uh, make sure that we educate users about how to custody their account key, as we call our backup phrase that you might have heard as well, um, because that's really important in order to be able to keep access to your funds in case you lose your phone or anything like that. Um, another feature that we uh, built because of our experiences out in the field um, is Data Saver. So even though we have made the light client as light as possible in terms of syncing block headers, in some cases the latency and the network conditions are just so bad that uh, it's impossible for uh, a user to use a light node. In that case, we enable people to still keep their keys on their device, um, but use a hosted full node um, in order to communicate with the network. This, we found, gives people who otherwise wouldn't be able to access the system the ability to access it. And then the last piece, as I mentioned, is uh, you might have heard me talk about CP Dodo and the stability protocol. Well, we make it really easy for Valora users to exchange between Celo dollars and Celo to participate in the stability protocol in the app. And that's again using that contract kit that I mentioned before to make it really simple to interact with the contracts. A couple of lessons learned from uh, spending some time building this uh, mobile wallet. I think the first one is, as I mentioned, full stack is really hard. Um, Many layers means that there's many places for errors. Um, and that, especially in the early days when we were uh, developing the protocol quickly, um, it was difficult to keep a stable environment, to keep up with changes, um, and to make sure that we could deliver that wallet experience that we wanted to. Um, however, I think that trade-off, as I mentioned, is really uh, worth it because we can develop a product experience that's truly really compelling. Um, there's no, oh, we, we're dependent on this thing that we don't control, or uh, we have to wait for uh, longer blocks, or, you know, uh, it just gives us the ability to iterate quickly and to kind of work on a product experience we're proud of. Uh, the second piece is that uh, good async handling is your friend. As I'm sure folks who have developed a blockchain before, um, things might take a little bit longer than you're used to, and uh, it's really important to hand to have good asynchronous handling. Um, since we use React Native and TypeScript, we're able to use a library called Redux Saga. And that really helped us with control flow, um, being able to block different things on network status or sync status, uh, but still have a simple developer experience. And then the last piece, as I mentioned, is that user research is really key. Um, 
even though we had some ideas about how we wanted to build things and what we wanted to build, we need to test our assumptions with real people uh, in order to understand what was true and what wasn't. Um, I think that there's no way we would have built the product experience that we ended up with today had we not spent time uh, understanding the needs of people around the world. So the, hopefully that was a, a good bit of information about what we've already built. Um, but I'd love to turn it over to Josh to talk about, as a developer, what you can build. All right, thanks a lot, Connor. Um, yeah, so to make it easier for DAP developers, uh, we created the mobile first SDK. Um, and this is really what we used internally to build the Valora app. Um, the two pieces being the contract kit that Connor mentioned, as well as um, the DAP kit. The DAP kit's a little bit f more for advanced um, usage, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so we designed the Cello SDK from the ground up to make it easy to build mobile first apps. Um, Connor, can you just go back one slide? Um, and the Celo SDK offers several advantages over similar blockchain development tools because Celo has several more primitives available that Connor mentioned. So Connor mentioned the exchange um, and we have easy integration with Celo assets um, being the Celo native asset and the Celo dollar. Um, the contract kit comes with core contract wrappers that are already initialized. So you don't have to initialize a set of contracts every time um, you set up your application and we have easy access to the lightweight identity layer that that connor mentioned that maps phone numbers to addresses and also easily paying transaction fees and alternative alternative currencies um, so you don't have to use the cello native asset to pay transaction fees um, you can use alternative currencies and this is easy to implement using the sdk so as we add new currencies that are approved for paying transaction fees. Um, this will be easy to integrate into your application. So you can go to the next slide, Connor. Um, so currently the Celo SDK has two parts, um, the contract kit and the DAP kit. And the contract kit works at a little bit lower layer. It's like a wrapper around the Celo core contracts. So it makes it easy to access things like the stability mechanism, um, the validator sets, the oracles that are helping with the stability mechanism and accessing the identity layer. Um, you can import contract kit into your project and have quick, quick access to the core contracts without having to initialize any of these contracts. You can just ac access them. Um, they're right in the JavaScript objects. And DAP kit is more like an interface between applications that are built on top of the Celo protocol. So it's kind of at the top layer. Um, it's currently designed to interface with the Valora wallet, and the Valora wallet is acting like the user's connection to the underlying Zello protocol. Um, yeah, so reading and writing to Cello can be managed by Valora using the DAP kit, so you don't have to manage connections, uh, user accounts, or signing transactions yourself. Um, you can just use the DAP kit for this. So. Yeah, as I mentioned, contract kit wraps the Celo core contracts, including the core ERC20 contracts in an easy to use interface. So as Connor mentioned, Celo includes the EVM as the execution engine. So our core token contracts follow the ERC20 standard. Um, and contract kit is currently written in TypeScript. So it easily integrates with any JavaScript or TypeScript project. And we're hoping to support more languages soon. And we welcome any contributions from the community to either Contract Kit or DAP Kit. As kind of mentioned, this is a fully open source project. So as you guys start playing with this, um, we'd like to hear what you are interested in adding and um, would like to help you add it as well. So DAP Kit relies on the Contract Kit for much of its functionality. DAP kit makes it easy to access some of the core features of Celo, such as the stable value currencies in a user's uh, Valora wallet. It makes it easy to specify which currency a uh, user should pay transaction fees in and to look up Celo verified phone numbers and accounts in a specific user's contact list. So this makes for a very different user experience than what you might be used to developing on other blockchains. Um, we 
built Datkit and TypeScript as well, and we've created example apps written in Expo. So anybody with web development experience can jump in. You don't need too much uh, mobile development experience to get started. But the DAP kit will be comfortable for mobile developers that are familiar with React Native. And Expo makes mobile development with React Native similar to a more traditional web development experience. But it does take some resourcefulness in getting used to um, if this is a new framework for you. So yeah, if you haven't heard of Expo yet, it's super easy to get started with. Um, and as you get started building on DAP kit, you'll, you'll get really familiar. Uh, with Expo and React Native as well. All right. Yeah, so this is a short demo. Um, of the DAP kit in action. This is our example DAP. So you can see on the main page, we ask users to to log in. Um, there's a few buttons. We're gonna, it defers to the wallet for the user to log in and the wallet asks the user if they should sign in. And once they're signed in, you can see their account, their phone number and their balance. Um, it's reading a smart contract and it just popped up. It's a little small there, but it popped up and it just says, uh, hello with a couple wave emojis. Um, that's the name of this hello world contract. And now we're gonna ask the wallet to update the name of the contract. So this is deferring to the wallet to actually sign a transaction and send it to the network. Um, and we're just updating it to uh, hello SF blockchain week. Um, and we can see that the transaction already executed on the test net and we read the contract name again um, and it's updated to hello SF blockchain week. So um, that was a pretty quick run through of the example, but you can download and explore this example, look at the code and uh, modify it yourself. Um, it's a good boilerplate. Uh, for starting your own project and just playing around with DAP kit and contract kit and getting started on the Alpha Horus test network. Um, but here's an example of a DAP that we built using DAP kit um, with a similar boilerplate as uh, the previous example we just showed. This is a saving circle DAP. Um, a saving circle is a strategy to help a group to help a group of people save money where they can contribute and withdraw funds at different times. So here we're showing someone with withdrawing the group's savings after it was built up. So you can see that a call is initiated to the smart contract. Um, we have to sign the transaction in the wallet and pay for gas. Luckily we can pay for gas in cello dollars. Um, and then we just have to approve the transaction in the cello wallet. So once the user approves the transaction, the funds from the saving circle are deposited directly into the user's wallet and then the screen will switch back to the DAP. Um, so we're just deferring to the wallet for some, some actions based on the, the preference of the developer of the application. So the, the application developers don't have to worry about managing the accounts, the keys, or these transfers. Um, it's just handled by DAP kit, making it, making it really easy. Um, so yeah, going on to some of the other projects that we've seen built on Cello in the past couple months um, in some hackathons and incubators. We've seen Impact Market working on a universal basic income game. That's uh, pretty cool to see. Uh, we've seen Bienvenir helping refugees get financial support when they move to new countries and they don't have access to existing uh, financial or banking infrastructure and they, they, need, to, um, they need access. Uh, PesaBase is building an integration with M-Pesa, which is a huge payments network in Africa. Um, so helping people in Africa, Africa get access to financial services, um, as is DuniaPay. Um, they're, they're helping with low-cost money transfers in sub-Saharan sub -Saharan Africa. And also Multiply Charity, which is increasing transparency and impact of donations um, with alternative currencies currently working on Ethereum and Celo. Um, so yeah, going on to what will you guys build? Um, just from my perspective with teams I've been working on, working with, um, looking at other blockchains and kind of the way things are moving in this, going in the space, um, I'm really excited to see decentralized financial applications built on Celo. 
Um, Ethereum has seen a lot of activity in the decentralized finance space, and what is possible on Ethereum is also possible on Celo. Um, as Connor mentioned, Celo is still really new. We haven't seen a lot of development here, so uh, it's a green pasture. There's there's a lot of potential here, and I'm excited to see what, what happens, um, particularly things around allowing users to use Celo assets as collateral for loans, or uh, users being able to earn interest by providing loans to other other users in the in the Celo e ecosystem. Um, I'm really excited to see bridges to other blockchains. We've seen stable coins um, really explode on Ethereum over the past few months. Um, and Celo has a unique solution to the stable coin problem. Um, there's the problem between uh, decentralization and centralization and how those assets are collateralized. Um, Celo is kind of unique in this domain. So how does the Celo dollar fit into this decentralized finance space? Um, this is to be determined. And I think, again, there's like a lot of potential here in terms of uh, what's possible. And I think developers are going to be pivotal in deciding which direction this goes. Um, I'm excited to see advanced user wallets. So as Connor mentioned, Celo is focused on user experience from the beginning, but there's still a lot more work to be done um, to make these systems even more usable. And I think keyless wallets or smart contract wallets are, are an underexplored area of research and development. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see what, what people come up with. Um, also, dApps that leverage lightweight identity in new ways. Um, this is a new primitive kind of in the blockchain space. I don't know of another project that has a robust lightweight identity layer. Um, Valora is using it to look up friends and send them money. And this is an obvious first use case for a phone number based identity system, but there's a lot of potential here. It's an, again, an underexplored area of research and development. And I think it's easy to imagine a future where the lightweight identity layer becomes essential beyond just sending payments to build more robust I digital identities. And it's interesting to start thinking about what digital identities might look like with uh, advanced user wallets. Um, so yeah, I invite you guys to help us explore these avenues and like see what we can build because there is a lot of, a lot of potential here. Um, so yeah, I've got one more slide just inviting you guys to connect in a couple different ways. Um, Celo.org slash developers is a great site. Celo.org generally has an, a ton of great information. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter there in the middle and then also on Twitter we're at Celo Devs and also at Celo.org. Um, so yeah, I think that's it and thank you for your time. Um, this has been great and as Connor said, we'll be around for question and, and answers and uh, come visit our virtual booth.